Today, we're diving into object-oriented programming, or OOP for short. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid grasp of what OOP is, why it's so powerful, and how to use it effectively in Python. Let's talk about what object-oriented programming actually is. OOP is a programming paradigm that uses objects to model real-world things and their interactions. These objects can represent anything, like a car, a bank account, or even something abstract like a process or a rule. This approach is incredibly powerful for managing complex programs. In simpler terms, OOP is all about creating reusable pieces of code that represent both data and behavior. It helps in organizing your code better, making it more readable and easier to manage, especially as your projects grow larger. In Python, everything is an object. The class keyword is used to define a class, which acts as a blueprint for creating objects. The init method is a special method called a constructor, which is automatically invoked when you create an object. Imagine you're designing a simple game. What classes would you create? Think about the objects in the game world and how they would interact. Share your thoughts in the comments below. OOP in Python revolves around four key concepts. Classes, objects, inheritance, and polymorphism. Don't worry if these terms sound intimidating right now, we're gonna break them down one by one. All right, let's start with the first and most fundamental concept, classes and objects. A class is like a blueprint for creating objects. Imagine you're an architect and you have a blueprint for a house. You can use that blueprint to build multiple houses. Each house you build is an object and the blueprint is the class. In Python, we define a class using the class keyword followed by the class name. Let's jump into a quick code example to see how this works. Here, we've defined a class named car. Inside the class, we have an init method. This is a special method that gets called when you create a new object of the class. It initializes the object's attributes, which in this case are brand, model, and year. We also have a method named star engine, which is an action our car can perform. So, in this example, the class car is our blueprint, and my car is an object or instance of that class. We can create multiple objects from this class, each with its own unique attributes. Next up, let's talk about methods. In OOP, methods are functions that are defined within a class and can be used by its objects. These methods usually operate on the data or attributes of the object. Remember the start engine method we just created? That's a perfect example of a method. Let's see how we can call this method using our mycar object. By calling mycar.startEngine, we're telling our mycar object to execute the start engine method, which will print out a message indicating that the engine has started. Pretty straightforward, right? And the cool thing is you can define as many methods as you need within a class to model the behavior of your objects. Now, let's move on to inheritance. Inheritance allows a new class to inherit the attributes and methods of an existing class. This is super useful when you want to reuse code and avoid redundancy. For instance, let's say we have a vehicle class with attributes and methods that are common to all vehicles like speed and fuel type. We can create a car class that inherits from vehicle, so we don't have to rewrite code that's already been defined. Here, we have a vehicle class with a start method. The car class inherits from vehicle and adds some additional attributes like brand, model, and year. Notice the use of super dot init in the car class. That's how we call the parent class's init method to initialize the inherited attributes. This way, car objects can still use the start method defined in vehicle, but also have their own unique methods like start engine. Inheritance is a great way to build upon existing classes without starting from scratch. Finally, let's talk about polymorphism. Polymorphism in OOP allows objects of different classes to be treated as objects of a common superclass. The key is that these different classes share a common interface. In simple terms, polymorphism allows you to use a unified approach to deal with different types of objects. Let's take a look at an example. In this example, both car and motorcycle inherit from vehicle and both override the start method. The function start vehicle takes any object that's a subclass of vehicle and calls its start method. This is polymorphism in action. It doesn't matter what specific type of vehicle we pass. The correct start method is called based on the object type. Polymorphism gives your code a lot of flexibility because you can write more general and reusable functions that work with different kinds of objects. So there you have it, 
a deep dive into the fundamentals of object-oriented programming in Python. We covered classes, objects, methods, inheritance, and polymorphism. These are the building blocks of OOP, and mastering them will take your Python skills to the next level. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth programming tutorials. Also, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.